Hello, Royalty. Good morning and welcome to Touch Points today. Once again, my name is God Gift Austin, your regular host and anchor to this channel. Like we used to do it, we pick our topics and uh, try to deliberate on them scripturally to ascertain the mind of God from those areas that have uh, hitherto uh, seem to have defied answers to our heart and over the years. And in so doing, we find answer to those questions and uh, what God is expecting from us and how we should respond to them. And as we do that this morning, may you be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So by the grace of God, we have been dealing on uh, accomplishments. And uh, no, we have been dealing on accountability. And in accountability, we the last question we're talking about what are the things we should be accountable for and i mentioned a couple of things and one of them seemed to be uh, you are accountable to what you say you are accountable to your spiritual life you are accountable to your character you are accountable to a, a, a number of things all right so you are accountable to the work that you are given to do how you do it and how you respond to it and uh, this morning we are continuing from there, and the first uh, Bible outline this morning says, in, as in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17, and the Bible says, Command those who are rich in this world not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, All right, who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Praise the Lord. God gives us richly all things to enjoy. In Luke 16, 11, the Bible said, And if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who will trust you with the riches of heaven? That is the word of God. Who will trust you with the riches of heaven? In Psalm 19, verse 12, the Bible said, Teach us to realize the brevity of life, so that we may grow in wisdom. Ephesians 5, 16, 15 to 16, the Bible said, So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools. But like those who are wise, make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Utilize them very well. And in summary from that, he said, you are accountable for your resources. How you spend your money, time, energy, and talent, you are responsible to them. The next one is, how do I become more accountable? In Psalm 119 verse 9, the Bible said, how can a young person stay pure? And he said, by obeying your word. In verse 66, he said, now teach me good judgment and uh, knowledge. In Psalm 1 verse 1, the Bible said, Oh, the joy of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked. All right. In Proverbs 27 verse 6, the Bible said, Wounds from a sincere friend are better than many kisses from an enemy. In other words, to become more accountable, Commit yourself to follow God's command as outlined in His Word, the Bible, and choose wise friends who can freely and safely give an account of yourself to. So, what happens when there is no accountability? In Judges 17 6, the people did whatever seemed right in their own eyes, while there is no king. In 1 Samuel 13, 11 to 12, the verse Saul replied, I saw. You didn't arrive when you said you would. I felt compelled to offer the bond offering myself. He was not the priest, but he did what was left for the priest alone to do. So left unaccountable, we will almost always lean towards sin. The consequences of those sins will hurt not only us, but many others, including God. So when we are left alone, we are compelled to do things on our own and those things are not to the glory of God. So how can I choose people to hold me more accountable? 1 Kings 12, 11, uh, 8 to 11 says, But Rehoboam rejected the advice of the older men and instead asked for the opinion of the young men who had grown up with him. The young men replied, Tell them, my father laid heavy burden on you, but I am going to make them heavier. Alright, so in Exodus 18, 
21 to 22, but select from all the people some capable, honest men who fear God and hate bribes. They will help you carry the load, making the task easier for you. Friends are not always the best advisors, especially if their counsel is not consistent with God's word or if they tell you only what you want to hear. Of course, like I said, the only thing they can do is to tell you what you want to hear because they are your friends. They don't want to hurt you. And secondly, they also have interest. So it becomes a foolish and selfish thing. They don't see it on the basis of the entire society, but just for them to have their way in your own cabinet. Praise the Lord. So how can I effectively hold someone else accountable? In Titus 1, 7-8, he must not be arrogant or quick tempered. He must live wisely and be just. He must live a devout and disciplined life. So, if you are going to minister to others by holding them accountable, you must be wise, honest, honest godly, and what trustworthy. What you cannot give, you don't expect it from them. And you know, the Bible says, He that goes to equity also must go with what a clean hand. That is when your own obedience is complete, before you cannot command the obedience of others. All right? The next question is, is it really important for others to hold us accountable? In Proverbs 12, verse 15, Fools think their own way is right, for the wise listen to others. Good advisors keep us from actions that can hurt us. That is the truth. So, what if I don't want anyone to know certain things about me? What happens? In Jeremiah 23 verse 24, they all said, Can anyone hide from me in secret place? Am I not everywhere in all the heavens and earth, says the Lord God? What you withhold now is likely to be exposed at a later time. So why not seek advice now? Besides, God knows all the secrets in our heart. If you are going to take accountability seriously, you cannot hide anything from the one who you are accountable to. Praise the Lord. So, in the next question, I said, Does God really hold us accountable for all our actions? Well, Ecclesiastes 11, verse 9 said, Young people, it is wonderful to be young. Enjoy every minute of it. Do everything you want to do. Take it all in but remember that you must give an account to god for everything you do i take it as a promise from god a word from god so enjoy life but stay within god's guidelines god will hold us accountable for everything we do who wants to explain ungodliness to a holy god on the day of judgment is a question who will want to explain what is ungodliness to a godly god on the day of judgment praise the lord i want to ask from these things or the learning or teachings this morning is there anyone who wants to allow god to give him a new journey a new beginning in his life can you say this prayer after me i say lord jesus I have come to realize myself. I have been living carelessly before now. But today, O oh Lord, I surrender my life to you. I want to be accountable to you. I want you to hold me, O oh Lord, to whatever decision that I make. Let it be inspired by you. Therefore, Lord, write my name in the book of life. Delete it from the book of death. Give me a new beginning. Give me a fresh start. Breathe upon me the breath of life. I want to live with you and I want to reign with you in eternity. Satan, take your filthy hands off my life. You did not make me. You do not have right to keep me. My life is hidden with Christ in God henceforth because I am born again. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I have prayed. Amen. If you have prayed this prayer with me, I want to encourage you to keep holding on to the things that you have had, the things that you have seen, 
keep abiding to them. The Lord is counting on you and your discipleship is coming from here also. The Lord will do what he has said to do in your life in the name of Jesus. To my listeners all over the world, I want to also encourage you. Please help me to spread this good news about the things the Lord is doing in this ministry. And also, let it go viral. My target is the entire world. The word of God must go out to even those places that people say the word cannot come in. But we are going to pray in and break in in the name of Jesus Christ. And as you begin to share, as you begin to like and make comments, do not forget to bring in your testimonies. We are waiting because God is said to do great things in our lives. As you do so, may you be blessed in the name of Jesus. Till I come your way the next time, keep doing, keep meditating, and keep basking in the euphoria of the glory and mercy of God. May you be blessed in the name of Jesus. Have a good day. God bless you.